Myler has been an influential family in the roller coaster industry. Carl Myler ran Myler Manufacturing. His son Fred and grandson Eric operate ENF Myler. Together, these two companies have built roughly 100 roller coasters. Many of them are kiddie coasters, but they are some of the best junior coasters on the market. However, they do have some larger and quirky rides as well. So in this video, I will rank their top 10 operating coasters I've personally been on. Before starting the countdown, I need to note that I have not been on ENF Myler's Wild Mouse at Scandia, Sacramento. This is their largest coaster I've yet to experience. I have heard it's not the best Wild Mouse, but it almost certainly would have made the list given how it's not a kiddie coaster. I also have not been on the Gravity Roller Coaster at Schnepp Farms. This is a junior coaster from Myler Manufacturing with a series of hills that I've heard can give some sneaky good airtime. Lastly, if you're looking for reviews, I already have them published for several of these rides, including everything in the top four. Number 10. Sea Serpent at Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. This ENF kiddie coaster has a custom layout. It's built on a nicely landscaped hillside, and the station is at the midpoint. You get some nice laterals on a curving first drop. Then the helix is two more swooping drops that build up some more speed and lats. Number 9. Ravine Flyer 3 at Waldemere. This ENF kiddie coaster is a familiar layout, a rise upwards, a downwards helix, and some bunny hops. The entry into the helix gives a pop of airtime and heads over a shed. Then the entire layout takes place over a pool with lots of fountains, which results in fun visuals. Number 8. The 16-foot oval with helix model. Examples of this layout include Bubbles the Coaster at Storybook Land, Canyon Blaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and Zoom at Oaks Park. This layout has a swooping drop in Bunny Hill, followed by a helix with decent laterals from the compactness. Then you have a few bumps on the way back to the station that will buck you forwards. Number 7. Cosmos Curves at Knobles. This ENF kiddie coaster takes the layout of Ravine Flyer 3, but it makes it a little taller and punchier. The entry into the helix is sharper, and it gives a good pop of airtime. Then the final hills are tighter and will jolt you upwards. And I like how this rise built over the waterway for the motorboats. Number 6. The Wild Mice by Myler Manufacturing. These wild mice are notable for two reasons. First, there are no block zones, and this ride runs multiple cars. El Toro Ryan is probably having a heart attack hearing this. Second, this ride has no restraints. You basically sit in bathtubs, so the turns and final helix really throw you laterally. The drops in this one are pretty mild, but that's fine because the turns supply all the excitement needed. Number 5. The Big Timber Log Ride at Enchanted Forest. If you are familiar with this park, you know it's literally in a forest. This flume is surrounded by trees on all sides and heads up a very long hill, with an actual chain lift no less. At the top, you pass through a shed with some lumberjack figures. After a slow elevated section with some nice views, you have three drops. The first is a small traditional flume drop. No thrills, but it can soak you. The second is why many people count this as a coaster. You have a dip down and up. Again, not too thrilling, but it is different. You then turn into the ride's largest drop by far. This plunge is extremely tall by log flume standards and even gives a little pop of airtime. I know it's not a coaster to everyone, but bare minimum, it is a good log flume. Number 4. Wild Waves of Playland's Castaway Cove. This is the first of a few larger ENF coasters. This one wraps its way around Gale Force. You have some neat visuals as a result. However, this ride's pacing is nerfed by a series of trim brakes. If you ride up front, you'll still get a handful of airtime pops, including some good ejector on the final bunny hill. Number 3. Hurricane at Fun Spot Atlanta. It is worth knowing this ride is known as Screamin' Eagle until recently. This ENF coaster has the size of a family coaster, but the tenacity of a thrill coaster. There are some legitimately powerful airtime pops towards the end of the ride. The final bunny hill in particular tries to eject you. Then the turns are super sharp. Each one gets progressively tighter, leading to some abrupt laterals. The final one does get a tad uncomfortable from the shaking, but the rest of the ride is very enjoyable. Number 2. Hurricane at Funspot Kissimmee. 
This is a clone of Casino Pier's Starjet that famously ended up in the Atlantic Ocean. This one looks janky, but it thankfully is comfortable minus the low turn after the second drop. Brace yourself for that one. The near hairpin turns whip you into them, and most notably, this coaster has several spots of airtime. The hills in the middle are the highlight as they have some bona fide ejector airtime. And coming in at number one is Prairie Screamer at Trader's Village. This is the largest coaster Myler ever built, and it also happens to be their best by a long shot. I experienced this coaster at its former home at Scandia, Ontario, and I am glad this ride was saved. It is a series of drops and turnarounds. The layout is repetitive, but it has some intense airtime. You violently get tossed into that lap bar. Then the turns are completely unbanked, leading to some nice laterals as well. This ride is very underrated and a pure riot. So those are the top 10 operating coasters I've personally experienced from Myler Manufacturing and ENF Myler. Which one is your favorite down in the comments? If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.